ANC Youth League is convinced that although difficult, the decision to recall Comrade Tabombegi was one of the best decisions the ANC has taken. The decision is in the interest of unity, cohesion and progress of the organization and will go a long way in ensuring stability within the movement. The ANC Youth League celebrates the fact that the decision to recall President Mbegi was influenced by our organization respecting and honoring due processes of the ANC. The ANC Youth League is not ashamed of its capacity to influence decisions in the ANC. That is Julius Malima at the time as president of the ANC Youth League. Let's welcome uh, Reverend Frank Chikani. Good morning to you. Uh, welcome. Good morning. Sir. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us this morning. So the, the journey started when? When did you start writing the book? Well, I intended writing a book in any way when I left government. Okay. So the events of September 2008 just precipitated that. And I, after leaving government, I began to write. Okay. Yeah. How was it? Was it dramatic? Was it emotional? Because presumably when you started writing, yeah. all of the feelings of the time came flowing back by the avalanche. Well, obviously it was an emotional moment. It was extraordinary. I, I think in this country, um, we have not had an experience like that before, where a president is removed under circumstances that he was removed. I mean, he had seven months to go. Yes. And then suddenly he got removed. So I had to think carefully about it. I'm the person who was in the center. I'm the person who had to manage the transition. Yes. And I'm the one who knows exactly what happened. And I thought the nation needs to know. Yeah. And I, I decided I was going to write about it. I see in the preface you're accused of disloyalty to the ANC yeah, at some level. Yeah, there were other people who thought if you write about that event, you are disloyal. Obviously, I mean, it's just personal opinions. Okay. Uh, but I mean, there's no disloyalty about this. Yeah. Uh, somebody was going to write about this story in any way. Somebody was going to interview me and go and write a book. And I thought, well, the time has come for us to write our story. And so, that's a critical part of my commitment that South Africans must write their story. And I thought I am better placed to write that story. Yeah. Some are saying some, the truth is twisted in the book. Some are saying that uh, some of the facts and some of the information is not uh, what it was. Is that correct? You know, there is no way in which you could write about your experience and yes. not have other people thinking otherwise. Even if we're in the same room, will interpret the events differently. It's worse if you are in different rooms, yeah. in different places. And I do say it in the book, this is my experience. And I'm writing about what I witnessed, experienced. It's not a research. Yes. It's not about interviews of yes. other people. Yes. It's not a third party story. It's not a third party story. I'm yes. writing my story. So somebody could have another story to write about, about the same, the same event. event. And they've got the right to write yeah. about the same event. But what I know is what I've written about. You know. And you stand by it? And I stand by it. So the idea that President Mbeki is now going to be removed, how do yeah. you in the presidency get to know about it? How does it get communicated to you before the actual removal? Well, uh, the book details that. Yes. I mean, that particular morning, SMSs began to flow around. This we is the Saturday it. morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. Yeah. Early morning. Okay. We got SMSs going around. The decision has been made. Yes. And that's how I got it. Okay. And of course, my staff began to communicate, the advisors, and it, it's detailed in the book. Yeah. And we had to decide as to what do you do? I mean, I'm in charge of the president's yes. life. I'm in charge of his movements and what happens. Where was he going so, to go at the time? I mean, in terms of just the presidential calendar and the program? Well, the weekend was okay, but okay. the following week he was going to the United Nations. Yes. And uh, he had a major African forum there, which he was going to participate in. So you had to think about if he's removed, what's going to happen with all the responsibilities that the president has to undertake? Yes. Remember, this removal had nothing to do with what he was doing in government. Yes. It had to do with dynamics within the party. And because of that, you were running a normal operation in government and suddenly this happens. Yes. There was you no vote to, of no confidence in parliament no or anything like that. no vote of no confidence, yeah. nothing. It's a straightforward party matter. Yes. And I'm, I'm in government. So I had to manage it, if you're Secretary of Cabinet, some people said, why didn't you resign? I yes. said, you can't resign as Secretary of Cabinet if yeah. there's a crisis. Yeah. When there is no cabinet, 
the Secretary of Cabinet takes responsibility. I'm the one who has to manage the departure of a president and manage the swearing in of a new president. Okay. And so I had to take responsibility directly and, and therefore I had no other options other than make sure that this country um, is stable. Okay. Yeah. Now you're talking about departure of the president. Let's let's take a look at this clip where President Mbeki, on the Sunday night, I think it was, he then announces his resignation. Let's have a look. Fellow South Africans, I have no doubt that you are aware of the announcement made yesterday by the National Executive Committee of the ANC with regard to the position of the President of the Republic. Accordingly, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the nation that today I handed a letter to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Bale Gambete, to tender my resignation from the high position of President of the Republic of South Africa, effective from the day that will be determined by the National Assembly. I have been a loyal member of the African National Congress for 52 years. I remain a member of the ANC and therefore respect its decisions. It is for this reason that I have taken the decision to resign as President of the Republic following the decision of the National Executive Committee of the ANC. What was yeah. the mood like? Well, you, you would imagine that we had to work on that, that presentation yes. itself because, I mean, he's resigning as president. Yes. He's not resigning as party. So it still was my responsibility. And the president had to go and make the statement, come back to the house, find us waiting there. And you can imagine the emotions that go with it. But he did an honorable thing. Yes. He was quite clear that he does not want any destabilization of the country because of him. He has worked for peace. Um, he's known for working for African Renaissance. And yes resolutions of conflicts on the continent, he was not going to be a source of conflict and he decided he was going to accept. That's very uh, composed record. though. Yeah. For that kind of time, that kind of pressure, that kind of decision. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's in the nature of Mbeki, isn't it? I mean, he, he takes things as they come. He's not emotional. Yes. And when he makes a decision, he makes it and he went to make the done. announcement and yeah, it's done. So at the time, before, when he went to make the statement and then he came back to the house, was yeah. there any time when there were tears flowing, anything that was sort of an emotional transition from what has been and the impact of a decision of the scale? No, actually when you read the book, there's a part that describes this moment yes. in detail. And I do take the scriptural, biblical, reference there okay that it was almost like the people who were waiting there the disciples of christ sitting in a room yeah and and listening to this and and having to receive him to come back and say now um you've done it and what do we do from now where to from here? yeah when do, where do we go from now and again it became my responsibility for you it had to be sure. business as usual you had to then effect the stuff at the I, United Nations and all of the I, other things with the incoming president. I had and no so. luxury to think about any other thing. I mean, this was a critical moment in the life of this country. The yes. president has just resigned. And you have to firstly make sure the stability. You must make sure that his program is reviewed and managed. You must make sure that there's going to be another president coming in and how you manage that. The whole week was really about managing it and becky kept on saying make sure there's stability yes you don't want that's the single most important thing the single most important thing. so the announcement has been made yeah now you are at the house with him yeah who are you taking instructions from at that time no because remember it was an intention to resign yes subject to a parliamentary process yes so he remained president until the last moment yeah up to wednesday night but aren't but, you taking instructions from Sour Street as well? No, because not yet. No, because I'm Secretary of Cabinet. Nobody is telling you I about. I take my instructions come from the president. Okay. Yeah, so I can't take instructions from anywhere. Okay. So the decision's been made. He's still president. Yeah. What then? What happens about the United Nations trip? Well, we had to decide. There was a decision that he shouldn't continue those activities, and that's where I come in. 
and say that there's a problem about somebody from outside deciding yes. which activities the president can carry out, which activities he can't carry out. Okay. Because he's still president. Unless he's, until he ceases to be a president, yes. he still has a responsibility. But again, the president said, I don't want to create any instability. I'm prepared to um, uh, leave in peace and manage the appointments. So we had to manage the appointments. At that time, uh, Minister Zuma was already in, in the UN. Yes. And she had to decide whether she's staying or not staying. She's still a minister, not a minister. And then we send the message that she should continue working as if nothing is happening until otherwise stated. During that time, did you think of resigning? I mean, I understand stability. No. I understand all of the other things. Did you think, no. this upsets me, I must go too? I, I think I have a commitment. It upsets you, but you've got a commitment for the country. Yes. And, and I'm a public servant. Remember, okay. I was not a political appointee. Yes. I was not elected. Yes. I'm a public servant. And a public servant's responsibility is to run government. And to continue and to serve I was the public. The, I was part of the leadership of the directors general. I had to make sure that all the directors general are in their place. Yes. And that when the ministers leave, it's the directors general. The, the nation depends on the directors general to make sure that the country as uh, runs. Okay. And that was my responsibility. We've, we've taken 10 minutes to talk about eight days in yeah. September. Thanks yes. for being concise. Okay. I'd like to urge you to go and get a copy of the book. It's a fascinating tale. Frank Chikani, uh, author of this Eight Day in September, The Removal of Tabo Mbeki, an incredible story. It's got 17 chapters. There's a second part of the book that's coming out in September. That's all I've got to say for you. It is now 2.30.